verse 13. Turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew. God bless you, thank you for staying up so late. Amen, but if you can watch Netflix, you can also listen to God's word, amen, because when the devil come for you, Netflix ain't gonna be there, but my God shall supply all my needs. Matthew 16, Matthew 16. We're gonna go to verse 13. So go to Matthew 16, go to verse 13. When you got it, say amen. Amen. If you ain't got to say, hold up, that means I ain't got it yet. Matthew 16, go to verse 13. Amen. Before we get started, let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. It's a blessing to be in the land of the living. Amen. Matthew 16 and 13. It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I am? Am I the son of man? Who am I? Verse 14. And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Then some say that thou art Elijah. And others say that you are Jeremiah. And others say that you're just one of the prophets. Amen. If we keep going, verse 15. And then he said that to them, but whom do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed thou art, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Verse 18, And then he said, I said unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. All right. So God says, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? The world says something different. In fact, the, if you, the European Jews, they don't believe in Jesus. Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in Jesus. Most faiths don't believe in Jesus. So Jesus ain't talking to them. But he looked at his people. He says, I know what the world says, but God says, who do you say that I am? So God says this, who is God to you in your life? Uh, I remember going through hard times, and I talk about my hard times all the time. I learned how to be saved by looking what God did for me when I was down, when I was without money, when I didn't have anywhere to live, when I didn't have a job, when I was stuck in jail, when I was stuck in the hospital. I knew who God was because God showed up in my situation. So Jesus says, who do you say that I am? I know what they say, but they don't know me like you do. You know me because I was there for you when you couldn't be there for yourself. When those bullets was flying over your head, I was there for you. When that man tried to stab you, I was there for you. When that car was driving with a drunk driver coming 100 miles per hour to destroy you, I was there for you. When you lost control of your car on the freeway and you were swerving left to right, I was there for you. God says, who do you say that I am? God says, believe in me and I shall believe in you. Next, turn me to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles is in the front of your book. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. And it says that they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Pekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and says, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. It says now, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Then he says, believe in his pastors and his priests, so shall ye prosper. Put a pin in that. So there was, a, there was a prophet, and they got up early in the morning. That's the first thing. If you ever want to get anything accomplished, you got to get up early in the morning. If you're looking for a job, you got to get up early in the morning. If you want to be productive, you got to get up early in the morning. If you start doing anything in the middle of the day, most of your prosperity is gone. 
God says, whenever you start something, first day, start early in the morning. And then he says right here, he says this. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. If you look on the dollar bill, it says in God we trust. So if you put your trust in money, you won't be established. If, if you think that your college degree will establish you, it won't be, won't be established. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. What does that mean? That means the first thing of being successful is putting God before you. In Psalm 14 and 1, it says, only a foolish man would say that there is no God. And then it, it alludes to this. Only a more stupid man would say there is a God and act like there is none. The first principle to becoming successful is to believe in God. And if you believe in God, God will establish you. You, what does establish mean? Establish means he will give you a foundation. He will give you a standing block. See, the problem with this generation, most of you don't have great establishments. You come from broken homes. You come from broken families. You come from broken minds. You look at your family tree and you see brokenness, brokenness, brokenness. And everywhere you go, you don't see anything that you like. And for many of you, you will have to be the first ones in your family to get a job. Some of you are the first ones in your family to graduate from high school. Some of you are the first ones in your family to go to college. Some of you ones are the first ones in your family to have their own house, to buy a house to have a dream, to have a credit card, to own a car. And because you're the first, it's hard to be established because everywhere you look around you, you don't see anything that you like. The Bible says, believe ye in God. And if you do so, you will be established. So what does that mean for you? Some of you are gonna be the building block of your whole family. Some of you are going to be the, 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 that root, that tree that everybody's going to be like, in 2100, they're going to be like, I remember back in the day, Grandpa Ty, he had a big house, and Grandpa Ty, he had this and that. You're going to be the ones that they're going to talk about. Because you believe in God, because you believe in God, God will establish you, and your works will become greater. Let's keep reading. And then it says this. It says, believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. What does that mean? Go to church, read your Bible, pay your tithes, listen to the word of God. And if you do that, you will prosper. Prosper means you will go forward. Everything that you touch will start to grow. Good things will happen for you if you honor God's word. The problem with a lot of us is we listen to the world. We listen to our friends. We listen to YouTube. We listen to podcasts. And we don't listen to the word of God. Then we look at our lives and we see trouble and we don't understand where it comes from. And God says, did you listen to me or did you listen to the world? See, the thing is, we are not of the world. We're going to talk about that a little later on. We belong to Jesus Christ. God says, believe in me and I shall believe in you. Turn to Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews, thank you, Jesus. 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he coming to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you don't have faith, you can't please God. I have a friend, and she watches sometimes, she said, uh, you, you're always trying to please God and you really don't care about what men have to do. The Bible says if God be for me, nothing can stand against me. If you're for me and God's not for me, I can fall at any time. But if God be for you, if God believes and trusts in you, then he will prosper you through everything. The Bible says, but you must have faith. Faith. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must establish your faith. Let's read, look at Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Put a pen in that. Through faith, we understand that the works were framed by the, world of, by the word of God, so the things are seen were not made, they do appear. Let me translate that. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is hope. Faith is hope. You can't see hope. You, you can imagine it, but you can't touch it. So faith is the thing that you don't have yet, but you hope that it's going to come to fruition. I'm wearing a shirt right now with Barack Obama on it. Now, to some of you, that means nothing. But to my generation, this was impossible. When I was a young man, we often joked, one day there'll be a black president. We laughed. It, it, it was really funny candor. One day there'll be a black president. But the truth is, most of us didn't believe it. We, we didn't believe that there would ever be a man that looked like me that would become the president of the most mighty man in the world. But through hope, God says, Barack Obama became president. See, the thing is, if you have enough faith, then things will start to come true in your life. You have to believe that what you're going through is temporary and that God has much for you on the other side of this journey. That's called hope. Many of you are young, and, and, and like I said, this is a very young church. If you look and listen to it on the television, this is a young church. So you're looking at your life, you're like, well, I'm 21, I'm struggling, I'm 36, and I'm struggling. The thing is, God says, keep hope, keep the faith. Because God will use that faith as a credit card in the spirit world. Let me say it again. Your faith is a credit card in the spirit world. Because with your faith, God will take your credit and he will blow it up and say, uh, that's my baby, I will prosper him. That's my son, I will take care of him. It's your faith that activates God. That's why you almost always have faith. You can let the devil take away your car, don't let him take your faith. You can let the devil wait, take away your job and take away your relationship. Never lose your faith because that faith is the peace that's going to get you through the hard times. You have to have faith to know that you're going to come through this thing and that you will become an overcomer and you will overcome every obstacle that the enemy puts before you. You must have faith. Next, turn to Romans 5 and 1. Romans 5 and 1. Romans 5 and 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Romans 5 and 1. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? When you have faith, God will give you peace. When you have faith, God will give you peace. See, when you have faith, you say, well, I don't have the right money. I got a text. You look at my phone. I got a couple texts. I got a text yesterday. Uh, uh, Pastor, I don't have my rent money. I lost $750. I said, wow. And then I got another text. Pastor, I'm hungry. We ain't got nothing to eat. These are some messages that I got just yesterday. The Bible says, if you have faith, God will give you peace. How does that work? When you have faith and you're going through something, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. That means you're going to go through some things. But the Bible also says God shall deliver you from them all. When you're going through something and you have faith, you know that you're going to get through this thing on the other side. Sometimes, I, I remember I was working on one of the cars and I was like, God, I don't know how I'm going to get this big old motor into this little bitty space. It doesn't make sense to me. But as I was laying underneath the car and I was looking frustrated, God says, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be driving. That's called the faith piece. And the thing is, we drive in the car as we speak. Because if you have faith, you're going to keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep going until you get to that thing. God says, never lose your faith. Because it's that faith that's going to activate God that he's going to push you through so you can prosper. Never lose your faith. Next, Romans 5 and 2. By whom we have also access by faith into grace, which where it was stated, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. Here's where it gets hard. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation work in patience. Verse 4. And patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh us not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Let me translate that. Verse 3 says, And we know also that we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. How many of you here have a car? How many of you have a car or a driver's license? The first time you got on the freeway, you were scared. Do you remember that time, the first time you got on the freeway in the car? You was frightened. You couldn't believe it. Uh, how am I going to do this thing? And you looking at the speedometer, it says 50 miles per hour. You looking around, everybody's flying by. So you're like, i got to get up to 70, and, you, and you're scared, and you're driving. But now when you get on the freeway, you don't even think twice about it. Why is that the case? Because when the first time you got on the freeway, you didn't have no experience. But as you keep moving through life, you say, I've been here before. Some of y'all in trouble right now. But God said, you've been in trouble before. You've been poor before. You've been stressed out before. You've been in jail before. You've been broke down on the freeway before. But God be for you. Nothing shall prevail against you. He said, while you're going through this thing, you've already been here before. He said, you ain't don't worry about it. God will make a way. And that's the beautiful thing about serving God. God ain't going to leave you stuck on the highway. God's not going to leave you stuck in, in a messed up mind state. God says, you belong to me. I will always make a way for you to get through. Never lose your faith. Never stop believing in God. Never stop trusting the king. Because God says, you belong to me. I will always make a way for you to escape in that hard day. Next, turn with me to John 17. John 17, go down to verse 14. We almost done. John 17, go down to verse 14. Amen, thank you, Jesus. John 17, go down to verse 14. Woo! Well, here's the hard part. We live in a world controlled by Satan. That's 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says, says that Satan is the God of this world. So oftentimes, you go through a lot of things that seem hard. Let's read John 17 and 14. It says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 15, I pray not for the world, should take us them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from all evil. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is true. Let me translate this. God says, we are not of this world. What? That's crazy. That don't make no sense. I live in Compton. I'm right here. Gravity. I'm right here. But God says, you are not of this world. God says, I am not of this world. But we live in a world that's controlled by Satan. Let's put this all together. See, the thing is, when you serve Jesus Christ, although you live in Compton, you don't belong to Compton. Although you live in South Central, you don't belong to South Central. You have a different citizenship on your driver's license. When they pull you over, they look down. They see son of Christ. They see daughter of Christ. They see daughter of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. See, the thing is, although we live in the world, we live in a special world. Matter of fact, let's turn to the book of Matthew so you can see what Jesus said. Turn to Matthew 3, 1 and 2. Matthew 3, 1 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. This don't make no sense. What are you talking about? We live in a different world. I'm glad you said it. Matthew chapter 3. Go to verses 1 through 2. Matthew chapter 3. Verses 1 and 2. It says, In those days, John the Baptist 
preaching in the wilderness of Judea, verse 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Put a pen in that. Go to Matthew 4 and 16. Matthew 4 and 16. We'll put it all together. Matthew 4 and 16. Matthew 4 and 16 says this. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region, in the shadow of death, that light sprung up. Verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Put a pen in that. So the thing was, Jesus often said, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What they were talking about was that God's kingdom is here right now. Heaven is here right now. We call it the spirit realm. So God said, my spirit is here right now. When you honor Jesus Christ, when you believe in God, God says you get to tap in into the spirit realm. You have a spiritual credit card in the spirit realm. So although you walk around and you have body and flesh, you belong to Christ Jesus. So the thing that other people go through, you won't go through. And if you, even if you do go through them, you won't go through them the way that they went through them. The other day I was talking to one of my friends. And she talked about how much she drank. And, and she said, well, I wish I could stop drinking. I wish I could stop drinking. But then I looked at her. I said, you don't look like what you've been through. Some of you done been through hard times. You done been through crazy things. But you don't look like what you've been through. Because you belong to a different kingdom. You have a different zip code on your driver's license. And because you belong to Jesus Christ, even though you went through something crazy, you won't look like it because God be for you. Nothing can be against you. You're tapped in into a spiritual credit card. You tapped into the spiritual realm. So God flows through you. And everything that you go through, you're going to go through it differently. That's why people look at me. They say, you 53? Yeah. You don't look 53? Yeah. You've been in motorcycle accidents? Yeah. You've been homeless? Yeah. You've been fired? Yeah. You've been all this. The thing is, you don't look like what you've been through. Because you're tapped into a different system. That's why I tell you to tithe. When you tithe, God will cover your finances. He will cover your family. He will cover your health. He will cover your home. He will cover your dream just by you tithing because you're tapped in to a whole nother resource. Learn to value God's spiritual system. Tap in to the spiritual realm because God says, if you tap in, I'll tap in. You want God to be for you in everything. You want God to supersede what the enemy tried to do to you. Turn to Jeremiah 21. We're almost done. Jeremiah 21. Go to verse 8. We're going to end on this. Jeremiah 21. Go down to verse 8. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. I'm going to end with that. God says, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. For some of you, God is saying this. He said, You've been going down this road, but you're lost. And he says, You're lost because you don't know where you're going. And he said, look here, on this road, you have two choices. One way is headed towards life and the other one towards death. Let's keep reading Jeremiah 21 and 9. It says, he that abideth in this city shall die by the sword and by famine and by disease and pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be born unto prey. Verse 10. For I have set my face against this city of evil, and not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Let me translate that. There was God, there was a people. 
And this people were sort of like us. Drink, smoke, sex, love money, love Instagram, doing everything, tattoo. They were living, they were living la vida loca. And God looked at this people. And he said, look here, man. He says, you have two choices. You can get on this path to life, or you can keep going down this road that's going to lead to death. And then he told these people this. He says, if you stay where you're at, you're going to die. Now, these people didn't believe this because they were living their best life. They were in the prime of their life. They looked around and they had everything that they want. But God says, if you stay here, you're going to die. What does that mean to some of you? Some of you need, it's time to move. Some of you, it's time to move physically. Some of you, it's time to move mentally. Some of you, it's time to move relationships. Some of you, it's time to move your money. Some of you, it's time to relocate jobs. What God is saying to you, right now, if you stay where you are, you're going to die. Your dreams are going to die. Everything around you is going to die. But he says, if you move, Right now, you will survive. What does that mean for some of you? Some of you need to change and start school. Some of you need to get jobs and change, and change careers. Some of you need to change some things. Some of you need to change your locations. Some of you need to change your mind. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God says there's a season coming where the enemy is going to destroy but if you move now, if you prepare right now, you won't have to worry about it when it comes. God is telling some of you, it's time for you to make better decisions in 2023. It's time for you to move into where God wants you to be. Because he's warning you, he's saying, there's something coming, but if you don't get prepared, you won't live when it comes. God said for some of you, it's time to move. So I don't know who that was for, but God says right now, it's about your survival. If you don't move, you won't make it through this season. God's telling you it's time to move. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody get up. Come to the front. Woo. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. When I first read that, uh, that thing about Jeremiah 21, where God said, it's time to move. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. And he said, if you stay here, you're going to die. I was like, wow. For some of you, the move means it's time to do something different. For some of you, it's time to do something different. You've been doing the same old thing, and it ain't working. God said, it's time to move, man. He said, it's some things coming that if you stay here, it's going to destroy you. So he said, for some of us, it's time to move. It's time to make a difference. It's time to do something different. For some of you, that could mean going to school. I, I know this morning I was laying in bed. I'm fasting right now. I'm laying in bed. Uh, we're going to talk about this Sunday. Uh, fasting gives focus. When you fast, God will focus you on where you need to work on your areas. And God told me, he said, Mike, you worried about this money, go finish your degree. I was like, what? He said, what you worried about the money for? He said, if you finish your degree, you have all the money you need. So I, I said, okay, God, I'm, I'm done. So I'm going to finish, give God a hand, I'm going to finish my master's degree. Hallelujah. God gave me that this morning. He says, stop worrying about it. He said, I already made provision, but you got to do your part. For some of you, it means transitioning. For some of you, it's going back to get your high school diploma. For some of you, it means transitioning, going to college. I'm so encouraged by these young ladies that get back to school. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Very proud of you guys. Keep going forward. We have to move. We can't stay the same. See, death is a state where you can't grow. That's all death is. When people die, they can't grow. They're not moving. When you stop moving, you have died. When you have them making no progress, you got. And the problem is, we got a whole bunch of people walking up and down the street, zombies. They're living dead. They moving, but they ain't going nowhere. So God says it's time for us to move because He has great things for us. 
And God says, believe. Never lose your faith. The enemy will try to trick you with things that you see. He will try to trick you with frustration and bad events and craziness and life situations. But God says this. Yeah, you're going to have some bad times. But he said in Romans 8, 28, it will be to your good. Even though you have this negative thing, it will work out to your good. So we have to keep pushing because those things will work out to your good. So I look back and, and sometimes when, when, when Jai and his wife sing my song, man, and y'all see me pass out over there and go in, I go in because I remember the painful days. I remember the hard times. And then I remember how God delivered me. So here's the thing. When I was going through it, it was hard. But today I look on it and it's joy. When I, when I was like Sister Jane and I didn't have no car and I, and I was riding the bike, I was on the bicycle, at least you got a bus car. I, was, I couldn't even afford to ride the bus. I was on the bicycle. But when I look back on it today, I have joy because I know what God did for me when I was going through that hard time. That's why I tell you, don't lose hope. Don't lose your faith. Keep believing in God. Keep trusting God. Keep coming to church. Keep reading your Bible. Keep tithing and watch what God do for you. In 20 years, none of you will be poor. In 20 years, most of you will have your own house. In 20 years, half of you will be halfway to retirement. In 20 years, some of you will watch your kid walk across the stage of a great college. It's that faith that will establish you and keep you going, even through the hard times. And here's the thing. We have to have hard times to appreciate the good times. See, the life is not about all just uh, uh, kibbles and bits. It's not about just happiness. You have to have some pain so you can get to the joy because there's a balance. But God says he will get us through all the things that trouble us in life. Amen. Anybody have any words before we wrap this up? And then everybody grab a hand. Amen. Give God a hand. Up. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear Smith. By your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the word that went forth. Father, continue to bless us and to speak into our spirit. Father, continue to strengthen us, even in our moments of weakness. When we don't think we can make it through, we want, we want to throw the towel in and we want to give up because the things around us are failing. The people that we trusted disappointed us. Father, speak to our spirit. Keep us encouraged, Father. Keep us trusting in you, Father. Remind us of who you are. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into this hand. I squeeze prosperity into this hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into this hand. So these young people become the head and not the tail. So they become victorious and never defeated. So that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Continue to cover them, Father. They drive on the highways and byways. Protect their minds, Father, when they're going through mental weakness and when things are coming in their life. And keep them encouraged, Father, so that they know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. 